Hi everyone. I uh, want to just be able to take a, a couple of minutes here to be able to discuss a couple of things that have been happening. Uh, as many are aware that uh, myself and including uh, the Ontario uh, Gorian Assembly is that we've decided to take a stand uh, especially with a lot of the bullshit that's been happening lately on, on FetLife and, and a couple of the other Gorian, Gorian mediums concerning uh, the Chicago Gore Group. Um, first of all, if you go through all of the different things that Krell and his uh, slave talk about, the one thing that they repeatedly uh, continue to deny and, uh, and lie about is the fact that uh, the one girl that was sexually assaulted is that they just don't want to talk about that it's you know is uh the the latest thing that they're they're trying to play and trying to spin is the fact that saying that it was just an over aggressive hug but no it was sexual assault you know an over aggressive hug someone does not intentionally and purposely start groping somebody's breasts an over aggressive hug somebody does not intentionally and purposely grab somebody's ass making it sore for several hours an over aggressive hug someone that does not forcibly try to stick their tongue down and french kissing a girl against her will all of these things were non-consensual all of these things were done deliberately intentionally in order to try to get back against the master of the girl at the time. It was premeditated, it was well thought out, and this is a continued MO of what Malkinius has done. He did the same thing to Zarius' girl, Talina. He did the same thing to Mark's girl, Selina. And there have been at least two other incidences that I know of that people have come forward to me and told me that this is what Malkinius has done even within the Chicago Gore Group. Crow has mentioned several times that he that he doesn't believe these things, that, that people were just out to get McKinney's because they don't like him or that they're jealous of him. This is all bullshit. Okay? Crow knew, the Chicago Gore Group knew, they've had other situations that have come up dealing with Malkinius as far as his behavior and what he's been doing within the Chicago Gore Group. You know, another spin that's been happening is the fact they're saying, well, you know, Malkinius isn't, isn't there anymore, so the place is safe. It's like bullshit. Okay, I'm calling you out on this. This is, this is bullshit. Okay, first of all, if you look at Krell's list as far as groups that he is a part of, you will still see that Malkinius and Krell still moderate and still are the leaders of the Chicago Gore Group. If you look at Malkinius's list of numerous dead uh, groups that he operates, you will see that Malkinius and Krell are still the leadership of the Chicago Gore Group. To say that he's gone, I have my doubts. You know, I have, I'm not calling them out and out liars, but I do have my doubts just based on the fact that that it shows on FetLife that they're still both leaders of the Chicago Gore Group. Secondly, um, one of the other things that, that just totally blows me away is that uh, the fact that the leadership at Chicago Gore, I don't know what, the, what their issue is. You call a spade a spade. You know. I, I'm a man that that if I see something, I'm going to call it what it is. You know, I don't hold back in anything. People on FetLife and people on on, uh, on other sites know that well enough that that if I see a bold-faced lie in front of me, I'm going to call people on that. I remember several years, uh, a couple of years ago actually, um, well I was actually more, but but when the last couple of years things have really blown, have really started to escalate, is, is with a uh, uh, a girl by the name of Nair, uh, you know, is that she was constantly going after different individuals within the quote-unquote Goring online community. Um, and she was very emotional. Uh, sometimes she, you know, and, and she had passion, I'll give her that. 
but the fact that she would go way overboard and it was like a parrot repeatedly repeatedly rephrasing things rephrasing things and it was just like a friggin parrot squawking in your ear all the time I warned her several times when she came into the, into my group to go in gathering places to tone down the rhetoric or to take it somewhere else I don't want to see that in my group one time she went over the line and she ended up posting after numerous altercations with me and me trying to tell her to tone things down or move it other places is actually posting a, a falsified document of Dragon you know and I saw this right off the bat and I had seen in other groups and and the insinuations even when it was brought into my group by Malkinius, by her, by Bear of Air, uh, you know they didn't like Dragon, <laughs> that was quite obvious though. For myself I personally don't have any use for the guy either but when they brought that that false document into my group I saved it you know because I wanted to get to the bottom of it. I knew that in, in a few months I was actually going to be going down to the area that Dragon lived and and I also had uh, a friend down there that that is involved in the legal system and I contacted him saying hey you know I'll pay you the money whatever can you get the legal document and uh, let me actually take a look at it several months I went down to be able to, to meet Dragon because he and Bray and, and Rapture had been going on and squawking like little girls for many months <laughs> about me and I, I wanted to nip this in the butt. I wanted to meet this guy, sit down with him face to face and find out what he was all about. Um, you know, so I let him know, I, hey, I'm coming down to your town kind of thing. Here's a restaurant I can meet you at kind of thing. Let's sit down. Um, you know, I just want to find out what you're about and try to talk this through. At the same time, he just escalated and ramped things up. As I'm friends with Hell's Angels, and you know, and I'm good buddies with this guy, and I'm gonna bring two or three friends because we're gonna videotape it. And da 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 da. And it's like, you know, Dragon, just shut the fuck up, okay? All I want to do is meet you, sit down with you, buy you a beer, and let's try to talk some of this stuff through. And it just, he wouldn't, he wouldn't listen. So he just kept pounding his chest and he's gonna break my legs and he's gonna do this and he's gonna do that, rah, rah, rah. And it's like, okay, fine. If that's what you honestly believe, kind of thing, I'd take your best shot. I don't really give a shit, you know, kind of things. But at that point, you know, I let him know flat out, if you're gonna be a fucking ass to my face, you know, I will deal with it. You know, if you wanna sit down as men and try to talk things through, I would do, you know, I'd rather have that. But if you're going to be an ass and continue to threaten me to my face, you know, you better be able to back it up. It's fairly simple. You know, that is a goring concept. That is a goring principle. Um, and of course, went down there. You know, the first time he said, oh, I can't go, I can't meet you because I'm banned from that place. Da, 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 da. And, uh, you know, probably for not even paying his bar tab or whatever. I don't know. So, okay, well, fine. Here. There's a place to cross the street, down a little ways, kind of thing. I'll meet you there. And uh, went there, and of course, oh, he didn't show up, and then he was making excuses. Oh, I had my children, and da 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 da. And like, which was friggin' bullshit. Okay. And the reason I know this is because I went to the trailer that he lives with his brother at, and Buddy was there. Okay. He wouldn't answer the door, but I did hear him turn off the TV. And I knocked on the door a couple of times, called out his name, and the place went dead silent. You know, didn't, didn't you know, at that point, didn't have use for the guy. The fucking guy won't even talk to me face to face. It's like, okay, no use for you. You're a fucking coward, and I'm done with you. So, end up going to the, the stag that night with friends kind of things and about a couple hours later he ended up posting a picture giving me the bird kind of things you know standing out in front of his uh his trailer that he uh, obviously had buddy uh take a one of his friends take a picture of kind of a thing and just you know yeah okay you can't meet me face to face you continue to yap off your mouth online kind of thing is you're you're useless you're you're, you're not worth my time anymore so getting back to uh 
with some of these other people online, with Nair, uh, Bear of Air, Malkinius, is that they continue to support. I'm just petting one of my cats here, by the way, so he gets a little bit jealous. But, uh, but getting back to some of these people from Silk and Steel is one of the things that just puzzles me is how they could support a sexual predator, someone that they knowingly know for a fact has assaulted numerous women and continue to back them up. You know, Nair continues to say, oh, you know, Chicago Gore is a great place to go and it's a safe place and I would go if I lived there and I've never been to a Gorean gathering as far as, you know, in, in, you know, in 20, 20 odd years or if she's ever been to one, which I don't think she has. Uh, you know, a bear of air, which still allows Malkinius to, uh, to post his own house gatherings in his group and then you have Krell which has lied to my face numerous times has posted uh, numerous times about the fact that you know that in the past that you know things that people are saying about Melchinius they're just jealous they're you know they they don't like him the guy's an ass and so that's why they're going after him and it's like no they're posting actual facts they're sharing what happened to them it's not one person. It's not two people. It's been several people have come forward. You know, I remember down in Chicago Gore when Krell and Malkinius were going down there. And uh, previous to that, Malkinius ended up actually sexually assaulting one of his best friends, Slave. That Z uh, Zarius and Talina end up going to a gathering that, that, that Malkinius was at. And Zarius end up leaving the room, kind of a thing. And Malkinius, at least a couple of times, I knew, might have been more, but at least a couple of times, end up grabbing Talina, dragging her over to him, and basically trying to put her head in his lap. You know, what the fuck? You know, the guy is a coward. He would never do that in front of Zarius' uh, face. You know, Malkinius never would have groped and grabbed um, um, Garen's girl's ass and tried to forcibly kiss her if Garen was standing right there. He would have been knocked out. You know, I've mentioned several times that if he or Krell ever came out to one of my gatherings or a gathering that I was at and they acted the way that they do around the Chicago Gore thing, I know for a fact, within a heartbeat, that every Gorian man, in fact, probably even some of the slaves, is that if they acted like that and sexually assaulted, or or basically were intimidating, or or doing inappropriate behavior to a girl at any gathering that I was at, guaranteed they'd be flat on their ass within five seconds. Not only that, but if, and I will tell you this right now, if they sexually assaulted someone and that was visible in front of anybody that was watching, cops would have been called, plain and simple. You know, we have some police officers within the Gorian Gathering Assembly. We have a lot of first responders. You know, we've done workshops, um, both within SOLA, which is the Southern Ontario Leather Association, and also just in the BDSM community, as well as uh, the gay LGBTQT community, about as far as safety, about as far as issues like sexual assault, as far as what is proper conduct and what is not proper conduct, and the fact that each of us has a responsibility to be able to call people out on it and to be able to act accordingly you know, some of us with uh, with our jobs is that it, we have a code of conduct that we have to follow, kind of a thing, and it's just, it's it's an automatic. Is that police have to be called? You know, within the Gorian community and within the BDSM community, and to a lesser extent within the leather community, is they have this mentality of leave the police out of it. We can go, we can. We can govern ourselves, we can police ourselves, etc. And it's proven time and time and time again that is not the case. You know, simple question if you're watching this video. And if you're, uh, you know, a guy with a girl that has a slave, 
or if you're just a slave or or even a guy and if you're just out at a regular bar kind of like watching the game TV shooting some pool listening to some live music and someone came up to you and basically asked you for a hug and then intentionally started to fondle and grope your gra your breasts grabbed your ass and start forcibly trying to kiss you what do you think would happen <laughs> guaranteed there are probably going to be some other guys immediately right in that vicinity are going to come over and knock you out secondly within the heartbeat you're going to be tossed out on your ass and guaranteed is that cops are going to be called why is the gore and gathering or uh, 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 the gore Chicago gore incident why is that any different it shouldn't be if the word starts to get out the fact that if you act inappropriately at any goring gathering whether it be in Oklahoma whether it be in Illinois whether it be in Boston whether it be in San Francisco whether it be in Texas whether it be in Colorado I don't care where you know if you act inappropriately and you break the law police will be called that would put an end to a lot of the bullshit that's been happening online we do that at Ontario um, with with the Ontario Gorian Assembly we do do that there have been several times now that we've gotten involved as far as given testimony being character witnesses and also encouraging other people from within other communities to be able to follow the law to be able to press charges to let it go through the court system to get some of these sexual predators and some of these low lowlifes off the streets you know the whisper campaign doesn't work you know coming up and denying it oh you know I didn't see that you know you know like you're just a bad person master Alec and you're picking on us and da 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 that doesn't work either you know call it what it is it was sexual assault it will continue to be called sexual assault and until the Chicago Gore group actually steps up takes responsibility and say yeah you know we've been watering this down you know we've been lying we we've been trying to sweep it underneath the rug is that is my beef with the Chicago Gore group is that they have continued to lie continued to manipulate the in fact lately they've even gotten the girl that was sexually assaulted last time by Malkinius they've got her to come in and try to water things down if you read through all of her posts you will notice that she never denies that she was sexually assaulted now she's just watered it down to be able to echo what Krell says and what Krell's slave says is that it was it was a you know well let's just call it it was a in a, an inappropriate hug no it was sexual assault her breasts were grabbed and groped with. Her ass was grabbed. And Malkinius forcefully tried to kiss her. It wasn't two people in the room. There was other people that were still present that saw this happen. Including Malkinius' own slave. Which did come forward and say, well, yeah, well, you know, it, you know, it, it. I wasn't sure what it was, but, you know, why are they picking on Malkinius, you know, other people do these things too. And not only that, but she openly says in one of the posts that was deleted, and there's a lot of fucked up stuff in that post, but, but she did come forward and say that Malkinius did try to, to, to apologize to the girl, kind of thing, not to the girl's master but to the girl kind of thing just to sweep it underneath the rug and that was basically because Krell was giving him pressure hey you should apologize and you know what the apology was you know I'm sorry you feel this way it was a misunderstanding it was a miscommunication that's not an apology that is not an apology it was intentional it was deliberate and the whole thing was is that Malkinius used the girl sexually assaulted her in order to get back at Garen. That's it in a nutshell. So the apology doesn't count because, you know, I'm sorry you feel that way. You know, it was a misunderstanding. It was a miscommunications. How can how can that be the, the case? 
Hey, may I give you a hug? Hug, done. Start playing with the boobs, grabbing her ass, and start forcibly trying to kiss, kiss her against her will. Non-consensually. Intentionally, on purpose, premeditated. That is sexual assault. Thank you for watching, and I just wanted to clear some of those things up.